Have you ever found yourself in a job that not only challenged your wits, but also chilled your bones? Gather close, for this is a story that will not merely send shivers down your spine. It will haunt your dreams. Imagine this. Myself, a seasoned park ranger, navigating the eerie, unyielding darkness of Utah's shadowy woods. Solitude? This was beyond anything imaginable, nights draped in an impenetrable cloak of shadows, with only the rustling of trees whispering secrets through the chilling breeze. Secrets meant only for the ancient woods themselves. But there is one night, a night just as the icy fingers of winter began to claw at the land, that remains scarred into my memory forever. My mission seemed straightforward enough, secure and close up, an old abandoned cave that had become the stuff of local legends, notorious for attracting a myriad of troubles, as irresistible and dangerous as a flame to moths. The locals had stories about the cave, ghostly apparitions, unexplained lights, voices from the depths, tales of spectral hauntings that I scoffed at with a hearty laugh. Until that one fateful, dread-filled night, a night that would redefine the essence of terror for me. As I set out, twilight was already surrendering to the dark embrace of nightfall, and a thick, unnerving fog was descending, contorting the silhouettes of the trees into ghastly figures. By the time I reached the cave's gaping maw, it seemed I had stepped across a threshold into another, more sinister world. An oppressive silence hung over the forest like a dense shroud, muffling every sound as if the very earth was holding its breath in dark anticipation. My task was to seal the cave with a heavy iron door, a barrier to lock away its mysteries until the thaw of spring. But as I approached to shut this portal, a chilling thud echoed from the depths within, followed by a guttural growl that seemed to rise from the very bowels of the earth. Every instinct screamed at me to flee to escape the accursed grip of this place. Nevertheless, bound by duty, I pushed forward, my hands trembling as they closed the cold, unyielding iron with a final, echoing clang. That was the moment chaos unleashed itself. The growls deepened, turning into thunderous roars as something massive began to slam against the door with ferocious intensity. Fear took hold. I ran, stumbling blindly through the enveloping fog heart pounding so fiercely it drowned out the noise of snapping branches underfoot. Desperately disoriented, terror gripped me as I found myself lost within an impenetrable maze of trees. The presence of some monstrous entity, always just a whisper behind me. By what seemed either a cruel joke of fate or a miraculous chance, I stumbled upon the cave's entrance once more. Inside felt safer than the unknown terrors of the dark forest. With shaking hands, I barricaded myself within, using old rusted mining equipment to fortify the door. The cave enveloped me completely, its suffocating darkness and damp cold seeping into my very bones. I crouched in the oppressive blackness, scarcely daring to breathe, every small sound magnified in the echoing stillness. Time passed, not in minutes or hours, but in slow, dreadful increments of fear. The air felt alive, charged with a malevolent presence, as if the cave itself was sentient and watching, biding its time. An unsettling feeling that something sinister outside was not merely waiting, but enjoying the symphony of my terror. Amidst the dark, the wind carried whispers, sinister voices weaving through the air like the threads of a nightmare. When I dared to crack the door open just a sliver, allowing the weak dawn light to pierce the overwhelming darkness. My eyes met a sight that rooted me to the spot in sheer terror. There, just beyond the door, stood a monstrous figure cloaked in shaggy, matted fur, its immense size casting a shadow that seemed to swallow the light. It stood there, a grotesque beast of muscle and sinew. It's back to me, but I felt its piercing gaze. The creak of the door alerted it to my presence, and it turned slowly. Its eyes, deep, disturbingly human, yet filled with a wild, savage fury, locking onto mine. 
I slammed the door with all my might, the sound reverberating like an ominous toll throughout the cave. Pressed against the cold stone, I prayed for daylight, for a salvation that seemed as distant as a forgotten myth. As dawn broke, the terrifying sounds gradually diminished, swallowed by the new day. With limbs trembling from exhaustion and fear, I emerged from my grim sanctuary, the forest now seeming like a silent, watchful entity. The ground outside was ravaged, evidence of the night's horror visibly etched into the earth. I left that cursed place without looking back, the haunting echoes of that unearthly roar still resounding in my ears. The memory of what happened during that supposed to be tranquil family hike in the dense woods still haunts me, gnawing at the edges of my consciousness and turning what used to be our beloved family outings into nightmares. I'm not much for storytelling, but maybe getting this off my chest will help me make sense of that day. Help me understand that what we encountered was real, or at least as real as anything like it could be. It was a typical start to a weekend. Clear skies, a slight breeze, the kind of day that's perfect for a hike. We packed some sandwiches, filled our water bottles, and set off. My wife smiling, my daughter chatting nonstop, and my son Jake raring to lead the way. He's always been the adventurous one, 10 years old and fearless, racing ahead on the trail but never too far that we'd lose sight of him, until that day. As we ventured deeper into the forest, the trees grew denser, their branches knitting together to form a dark canopy overhead. Light struggled to penetrate this natural barrier, casting the ground in perpetual twilight. The air grew cooler, filled with the earthy smell of moss and decay that's typical for densely wooded areas. Jake, buoyed by his usual exuberance, had sprinted ahead and his laughter echoed faintly back to us. But suddenly, his laughter stopped, severed like a cut rope. We called his name, our voices growing sharper with worry, but there was no response. A suffocating silence descended on the woods, the kind that presses in on your ears and raises the hairs on the back of your neck. My wife's face was etched with concern, and I could see my daughter clutch her side, her excitement replaced by fear. We picked up our pace, calling out louder, the silence around us becoming oppressive, almost menacing. Then Jake's scream shattered the stillness, raw and terror-stricken, slicing through the woods and into our very bones. Panic took hold, pure and consuming, as we raced toward his screams. The underbrush was thick, snagging at our clothes, scratching our faces as we pushed through desperately. The screams led us to a clearing, a small pocket within the forest where the dimming light seemed to hesitate. There, the sight that greeted us was something out of a dark fairy tale. A massive, hulking figure stood holding Jake by the ankle. It was covered in matted fur, its frame humanoid but grotesquely muscular, far larger than any man. The creature's eyes, deep set beneath a heavy brow, flicked up to meet mine, reflecting a chilling, unhuman intelligence. I didn't think. I reacted. Stones, sticks, my own fists, I hurled everything I could at it, screaming from the depths of my terror. My wife and daughter were crying, shouting, a cacophony of fear and confusion. The creature looked at us, its gaze almost curious. Then, with a grunt, it tossed Jake toward us. He landed heavily in a bush, unmoving, as the creature turned and disappeared into the thick brush with unsettling agility. We grabbed Jake, who was thankfully conscious, though shaken and bruised, and we ran without looking back, the forest seeming to close in around us as we fled. By the time we reached the car, night had fully descended, wrapping its dark arms around us in a not-so-comforting embrace. Driving home, nobody spoke. Jake was curled up in the back, quiet, a stark contrast to his usual chatter. At home, the familiar walls felt alien, as if the shadows had deepened, hiding corners we had never noticed before. Jake has nightmares now. He wakes up screaming, just like he screamed in the woods. He doesn't go outside much anymore, and frankly, neither do I. What haunts me the most about that day isn't just the terror or the sight of that thing holding my son. It's the helplessness, 
the raw, unfiltered dread of knowing there are things in this world that defy explanation. Creatures that lurk on the edge of our reality. Watching. Waiting. We were lucky to escape with our lives, but something fundamental within us was left behind in those woods. Every creak of the house, every rustle of leaves outside, sends a jolt of fear through me. A constant reminder that not all is as it seems, and that the world is far stranger and more terrifying than I ever imagined. I'd always been the adventurous type, someone who thrives in the solitude of nature. That's why I decided to head out alone for a weekend in the Washington Mountains, looking for a bit of peace away from the city noise. I found a quiet spot by a stream, surrounded by thick forest, perfect for setting up camp. Everything was picturesque, just me, the trees, and the calming sound of running water. As I set up my tent and got a fire going, the place felt like something out of a nature documentary, tranquil and completely untouched. As dusk turned to night, I realized I was running low on firewood. I grabbed my flashlight and headed into the surrounding woods, not too worried about the creepy noises you usually hear out there. I was rummaging through the underbrush, picking up decent-sized sticks when I heard something big moving in the distance, like the sound of heavy footsteps. Rationalizing it as just another hiker, or maybe a large animal, I continued with what I was doing. Coming back to my site with a good haul of wood, I was shocked to see my fire had been smothered. Not just dying out, but like something had deliberately put it out. No wind, no rain, just a pile of wet ashes. That unnerved me, but I tried to shake off the feeling, blaming it on an odd, natural occurrence. Maybe a freak downdraft or something. That's when the smell hit me. A foul, choking stench, so overpowering. It was like a physical blow. It smelled rotten, like decay, and filthy, wet animal, all rolled into one. I've never smelled anything so bad in my life. It was so strong, I could almost feel it coating my skin. The forest, usually alive with the sounds of night creatures, had gone eerily silent, as if everything was holding its breath. While I was trying to get my fire started again, a rock suddenly whizzed past my head, thumping against my tent with a force that suggested it wasn't just tossed, it was thrown with intent. Frozen in shock, I called out into the dark, demanding to know who was there. The only response was another rock, this time hitting the ground right next to me. That's when real fear took hold the kind that crawls up your spine and grips you tight. I shined my flashlight into the trees, trying to catch a glimpse of who, or what, was out there. My light caught something that made my blood run cold. Eyes, a pair of them, reflecting the light back at me from about eight feet off the ground. They blinked, and I saw it. This huge, hulking shape that seemed to blend into the trees. Every campfire story about Bigfoot I'd ever laughed off, as just fun fiction came crashing back to me in a horrifying rush of reality. The thing made a deep, rumbling sound that shook me to my core. It wasn't just the sound, it was the feeling that came with it. Like this thing was angry, and I was an unwelcome intruder. I knew I had to leave. I packed up my gear with shaking hands, glancing over my shoulder every few seconds. I felt watched, hunted almost, as I hurried back to my car. Even as I drove away, the terror didn't subside. My heart was hammering, and I kept scanning the shadows along the road through my rearview mirror, half expecting to see that massive figure looming up behind me. When I finally got home, I locked the door stood there, trying to calm down, but I couldn't shake the feeling us of those eyes watching me.